Hey guys, today I'm going to show you how I usually paint with uh, four different kinds of paints and this is going to be a small tutorial how to cope with the problems that comes with the different brands uh, of paints and different manufacturers. They all have tips and tricks in order to achieve similar results but in the end of the video you will see that uh, uh, you can achieve almost the same with whatever brand you're using or have available in your nearby hobby store. So stick with me to see what will happen with four different kinds of paints. So I'm gonna be showing you the flat Mr. Hobby, flat Tamiya, MIG paint which is similar to Vallejo and AK and uh, the most unpopular aqua color from Revell and you'll see later on why it's uh, quite unpopular. So the thinners we gonna use this is IPA isopropyl alcohol and tap water. Tap water is usable for all the paints and uh, IPA is not. Uh, the best reason for that is, uh, the best explanatory is that because the Tamiya are lacquer based actually, they are acry acrylic paints but they are, uh, as far as I know, they are flammable, they are lacquer based and also Mr. Hobby and they can be used with lacquer thinner as well as uh, with uh, water and acrylic thinner so um, that's why I prefer to thin them with this one. For Revell and from Mick, uh, also for Vallejo and AK, water is a better solution because water helps you uh, thin the paint uh, more fine if I might say that and also uh, you can use that of course with Tamiya or Mr. Hobby but uh, you need a very small amount of water to, to achieve better thinning with them compared to with uh, IPA. With the IPA, especially in the warm weather, you, have, you will have eventually problems for paint curing too fast and so on. But uh, let's see what will happen. So we're gonna start with Tamiya. Tamiya uh, XF series are matte paints uh, so I'm gonna use Ocean Grey which is part of the Spitfire camouflage if I'm not mistaken it's XF82 uh, um, their X series I think they're straight out of the bottle glossy and uh, Tamiya are by far the best matte paints that I've encountered. I'm gonna uh, stir those with a toothpick. In my case this is not exactly needed because the paint is relatively new and uh, I'm gonna pour it directly into the airbrush. So next I'm gonna show you how it uh, coats straight out of the bottle. So my pressure is about 22 psi. The crown here is still there, so I'm not up for a final detailing. As you can see, it holds on very well. As you can see, it still sprays quite liquid so that's not a problem at all you can put the crown down to the paper and do a fine detailing as you can see the paint is starting to get a bit uh, dry and you can tell that by the spots here The delay with the spray is caused by the paint being already too thick. So uh, I'm gonna put a couple of drops of uh, IPA 
there isn't exact formula for doing that. Uh, what I prefer to do is use a brush and when I use the brush, I'm going to show you how that works. When I use the brush, I stir it in the paint jar and when you hold it up, it got a drip drops of paint that means it's almost perfect. So this particular tin is uh, what I work with usually. You can see the results. It sticks differently to a piece of paper and to a model. As you can see, the spots here means that it can be tinted even further for good freehand camouflages. Although, as you can see right now, it works quite fine. Let's go on to the Mr. Hobby. The pigments are usually settling down to the jar quite fast, so you need to always we stir the the consistency of the bowl to be sure that you'll have the the proper thing applied in the airbrush. Here we have chocolate brown from Mr. Hobby, which is similar to Tamiya, but it has some differences. The first difference is that it has a little satin finish compared to Tamiya. It's still flat, but uh, a bit different. The other thing is that I believe it dries a bit faster, especially in the dry weather. And I'm gonna again apply straight out of the bottle because it's a brand new paint, fresh in time it gets harder to be used without thinning but for the purpose of this tutorial I'm going to show you how it works you always should spray aside before the model as you can see the freshest paint and it sprays even better compared to Tamiya that we just tested and your brush is not clean, so you get the idea. Let's try and do some fine lines with that. As you can see, it's a bit thick for that, so I'm gonna add some IPA again. There is no particular formula at least I'm not using one, I just add to the point where I get what I just show you with the dripping paint from the brush. It got a drip off natural from the gravity and that's usually enough. After you thin the paint you gotta apply a bit more pressure Spray aside to clean the leftovers over the needle and then start again clean and fresh. It is still not clean enough. Now it's a bit better. And this is very cheap Chinese airbrush, it's like 15 bucks. You can see that the paint hold on quite nicely, so you can imagine that with a better airbrush you'll get better results. Uh, the needle is still dirty, so I'm going to use water to clean it like that to get rid of the leftovers of the paint. And you'll see the difference now. It needs more thinning.
you gotta constantly monitor the the paint and what you're getting with it just because in order to get the proper thinning especially for freehand camouflages you're having like the option of the 10% accuracy if you're 15% or 5% aside from that you'll have troubles so you gotta be within those 10% to get the proper thing as you can see now it's far better because it's thin and it's very warm day so this helps it still sprays from a distance quite nice but you need additional layers to achieve proper coverage however for panel fading modulation this is the way you can still spray fine lines you see how fine that is I probably can do better than that but I gotta put a lot of more effort into thinning and preparing the paint which I usually do when I spray freehand camouflages so for the panels modulation thin paints layer over layer that is the way so this can be easily achieved with water but in order to achieve that same result you need to put small amount of water smaller compared to IPA so let's see what will happen with uh, MIG paint now next we're gonna use MIG dark drugs which is color dark similar to the Mr. Hobby that I just showed the MIG paint has a metal ball inside of them for better shaking and it just stirs the paint better I'm going to use this straight out of the bottle as you can see you don't need a stick here the paint rips off quite nicely but they cure faster so I'm going to show you how to deal with that so first needle is clean probably you won't see it in the video but uh, I'm telling you it's clean so trust me you see how it sprays very nicely straight out of the bowl a lot of people though have problems with that thing that is because as you can see it dries very fast when you don't have a cup over it and even if you do it still dries very fast and now we should have a line but we don't just because the needle the needle has paint over it the solution to that is to get a tap water brush and clean it that way to avoid that and in order to spray a freehand camouflage or a long thing something that you do for 10-15 minutes you gotta constantly clean the needle you see how it sprayed water usually you should do that before applying paint to the mold just the side on the piece of paper as you can see here I hope you can see the spots here that's because you see that's because the paint is a bit dry again the solution is to clean the needle to avoid that you can use tap water get a bit of it and then mix everything together As you can see, again, you can add a bit more. Now 
One more time. Before you apply to the mold, spray with high pressure to clean the needle. Clean it with the clean brush, stiff. Again, clean the water. And then we have, sorry, that's leftover. And then we have better result so a lot of people complain about the paint or those paint actually the line from Mick and from AK Vallejo but if you're careful you can achieve great results however you need to constantly clean and that's the main difference between those paints you can do it with the paper or brush or whatever the lines are nice compared to those two which is Tania and Mr. Hobby, we can get same fine lines. And we can always get the modulation thing, but we need even more water for that. Those paints dry fast. You gotta constantly work with the airbrush to help the situation and that's the main difference otherwise the paints are great so if you're using Vallejo or AK or MEC have that in mind as you can see here we have more liquid appearance However, once dry, layer over layer, that is not a problem at all. And again, I'm spraying with a very cheap airbrush, which means the precision is lower. So, with a decent airbrush, with a decent environment you don't have to spray in very moist areas or expect what will happen with a lot of moist around you nor very dry areas like for example if you're living in the desert somewhere in california nevada you'll have more problems similar to those and actually we're doing this tutorial in a city near the sea so that's why we don't need to apply more from the thinner and so on as you can see those paints are pretty good as well it depends on the uh, your hand basically you can stick with that for quite a while Compared to those two here, they dry pretty fast and I noted that I uh, used most of the Tamiya in 5 or 6 application while with those kind of jars and applicators I tend to stick a bit longer to that paint which means you have uh, more money for models if you can spare from paints so let's see what will happen with that one now so last what we have is Ravel acrylic paint aqua color it is in a plastic cup jar whatever is that it's very very thick so in order to spray with that which is impossible for many out there you gotta preset the paint into the 
a different jar or in the cup and I'm going to show you how I do it in the cup first I pour some water around the sorry around the amount that I'm going to use and then with the brush I take a bit from that paint and put it into the jar where I mix it with the water because as you can see it's kind of a gooey stuff this is the most difficult thing with Ravel paints they're very nicely thinned and everything but in order to get the proper dilution radio ratio you gotta work I'm actually not sure what I'm having right now here because I barely use those for airbrush applications as you can see it drips off but it's different you gotta pre-mix it well and even then the end result is kind of unexpected so let's see what we have here we're gonna spray at the same pressure and as you can see it's a bit thin so what we're gonna do we're gonna add more paint it didn't look thin though because the paint sticks to the brush even now it might not be thin enough once applied they look great though but before that you waste a lot of time doing this we still have quite thin paint now we have a result similar to what we have in, with diluted paint from MIG which is not a problem if you apply it over a primer and if you apply it for a modulation process it's great in order to achieve fine lines we gotta add more paint and you constantly gotta do that and that's why people tend to avoid those paints because you gotta work your way until you get the results you want while with other companies you just spray it straight out of the box and that's it now it's a bit better as you can see the needle it's already dirty it's gotta be cleaned the same way so for free hand camouflages you see the needle? Again dirty. We have a diluted paint and the only way to deal with that is to change the pressure. If we use higher pressure like for example 30 psi let's see what will happen. You see? It's not a nice result. However for a distance spraying and modulation, the result is great. But for fine lines, you're doomed. If we get lower pressure, for example, like 15 psi, we can achieve finer lines. But in order to fill that with paint, we gotta spend like an afternoon or a small tank or aircraft because it sprays quite transparent
What you saw though is that with all the paints that I showed you, all the four paints, you can achieve similar results. So usually the problem is not in the paint, but in the dilution, in the pressure, in the uh, moist, moist in the air or whatever. That's doable and that's fixable actually. The enamel paints are uh, quite different. I'm going to show you a different uh, video about them. But those four here are the main ones. And there are life color and so on, which I don't have examples from. And they are quite similar to those. So these, I believe, are the most popular, especially Ravel is popular in Europe. Those three here are probably the most popular in the world. So with the proper preparation and information, you have to be able to achieve similar results with all of them. As you can see, there isn't much of a difference. So good luck with that. And if you have any questions, feel free to contact me. In the end of the video, I'm going to show the options for that. And I hope that was useful. See you in the next one.